St. Dominic, the holy founder of the Dominican priests and brothers and sisters, is considered to be the author or institutor of the rosary in its present form. The custom of counting repeated prayers by the use of a string of beads or knots or pebbles in a bowl was prevalent long before the time of St. Dominic. By at least the 9th century, monks were reciting all 150 psalms, at first every day, but later every week as part of their prayers and devotions. One way they kept track was to count out 150 pebbles and then place one pebble in a container or pouch as they said each psalm. People living near the monks wanted to mimic this devotion, but due to lack of education, couldn't memorize all the psalms. Printed copies, even if individuals could read, were not available as the printing press was centuries away. So Christians began to pray 50 or 150 Our Fathers, also called as Paternosters, each week instead of the Psalms. In order to keep count of the Our Fathers, they often used string with knots in it instead of counting on rocks. Later, the knots gave way to small pieces of wood and eventually to the use of beads. By the 12th century, in Europe, they were saying Hail Marys over and over and counting them on beads, just as they had done before on Our Fathers. The 150 bead rosary is sometimes called the Psalter of Our Lady, or sometimes the Layman Psalter, since the 150 Hail Marys took the place of 150 Psalms. The division of 150 into 15 decades, or groups of 10, separated by the large Our Father beads, was first indicated by Mary to St. Dominic. In 12th and 13th century France, a group of heretics known as the Albigensians was destroying the minds of the Catholic laity with its erroneous ideas. The Albigensian heresy which maintained that all material creation was evil, had made alarming inroads among the population in France and other countries. Marriage is evil. These errors are not pleasing to God. Their teachings encouraged suicide, many times by self-induced starvation, because they believed that the body was an intrinsic evil and that the soul must be liberated from matter at all costs. Dominic fought against Albigensianism by traveling to different regions, preaching, living simply, and setting an example of poverty, humility, and virtue. but he had very little success. Not many people were willing to follow him, and he lost some of his followers too. Tired and weary, one night he implored Mother Mary to show him how to lead the misguided people back to the church. Hello, viewers. You can watch all episodes of this video right now on Patreon. If you can pledge a small monthly donation, as low as $2 on Patreon, you can watch exclusive videos, bonus content, get free merchandise, and much, much more. Just go to patreon.com slash Christian Kids. We turn the best lessons from our faith into interesting animated videos and share them online. With your support, we'll be able to make more videos and invest more in the quality of each video. So what do you say? Every little bit helps, and your kindness will be rewarded with some pretty awesome perks. If you are not in a position to support us financially, then please do pray for us. Prayer support is very important for our mission. We hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. One night. Mary herself appeared in front of Dominic.
Traditions say that Our Lady revealed to him the rosary that night. Mother Mary explained to Dominic that only if the people thought about the life and death and glory of her son, uniting with it the recitation of the Hail Mary, could the enemies of Christ be overcome. Mere physical force or eloquent preaching could never succeed. Be of good courage, Dominic, for the fruits of your labor shall be abundant. This devotion which you are to spread by your preaching is a practice most dear to my divine Son and me. It is a most powerful means by destroying hearsay, overcoming vice, of encouraging virtue, imploring divine mercy, and obtaining protection. The faithful will obtain many advantages through it and they will always find me ready to aid them in their wants. This is the precious gift which I leave to you and your spiritual children. A mere string of beads to count the Our Fathers and Hail Marys recited while thinking about the mysteries of our Lord's life and death. Mother Mary indicated a different method to say the rosary she divided the 150 beads, which was the usual form of worship till then, into 15 decades, or groups of 10, separated by the large Our Father beads. Mary divided the rosary as a means of teaching her children the truths of the religion, which is nothing other than the wonderful story of God's love for them. She chose 15 of the most important events in her son's life, a part of the story of God's love for us. Mary asked that her children think of these events while they say the Hail Marys of their rosary. The first five of these events are called joyful, as they remind us of the joyful beginnings of God's great work of redeeming love for us sinners. It all began at the first joyful scene, Angel Gabriel informing Mary that she was to be the mother of God's Son. God had promised to send him into the world to open the gates of heaven to us after Adam's sin had closed them. The second joyful scene took place when Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was to be the mother of Saint John the Baptist. Elizabeth learned from Mary that she will soon give birth to the long-awaited Redeemer. The third joyful scene took place on the Christmas night, when God's Son was born into the world so that He could begin His work of redeeming us. The fourth joyful event is Mary offering her divine child to God in the temple. Prophet Simeon told her that while many would accept this child as the Son of God, yet many would reject him. The fifth joyful scene took place when Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple after he had been lost. The next five of the rosary events are called sorrowful because they remind us of our God's love shown to us by his terrible suffering and death. The first sorrowful scene reminds us about the Lord's agony in the garden when the horror of our sins made his sweat run as drops of blood. The second sorrowful event reminds us the lashing which our Lord suffered as the payment for punishment due to our sins. The third sorrowful scene shows our Lord's head covered in thorns. The fourth sorrowful event reminds us about Christ struggling up the hill of Calvary to pay the price of our redemption. The fifth sorrowful event reminds us of the event of Christ shedding the last drop of his blood to open the gates of heaven for us. Man did his worst to God, while God did his best for man. 
The final five of the rosary events are called glorious because they recalled the happy triumph of God's story of love for man. The first glorious scene recalls the resurrection when Christ conquered death and thus guaranteed our own bodily resurrection from the dead. The second glorious scene recalls Jesus ascending to heaven after telling his disciples that he will be with them in spirit forever. The third glorious scene recalls Christ sending his Holy Spirit to his apostles. The fourth glorious scene recalls the wonderful assumption or taking up the body and soul of Mary into the heaven. The fifth glorious scene is the coronation. God gives Mary a special place in heaven, crowning her queen of heaven and earth. Mary specially selected these 15 scenes to teach and constantly remind her children of the good news of God's love and his plan to have us with him forever. They are called the mysteries of the rosary because although they are visible events, we can never understand their full meaning. How could God be born of a woman? How could God suffer and die? How could he love us so much? Mary chose all these scenes or mysteries because she wanted us to think about them and apply them to our own lives while we say her favorite prayer of the rosary every day. Dominic used this simple and powerful weapon as directed by Mother Mary to convert so many thousands of heretics that the heresy disappeared. Devotion to the rosary spread throughout the world very quickly. All things, even the holiest, are subject to change, especially when they are dependent on man's free will. It is hardly to be wondered at, then, that the confraternity of the Holy Rosary only retained its first fervor only for about a hundred years after it was instituted by St. Dominic. People soon forgot about the rosary, and after a while, it was like a thing buried and forgotten. In a few years, the whole of Europe succumbed to the most terrible plague that had ever been known. Starting in the east, it spread throughout Italy, Germany, France, Poland, and Hungary, bringing desolation wherever it went. For out of a hundred men, hardly one lived to tell the tale. Big cities, towns, villages, and monasteries were almost completely deserted during the three years that the epidemic lasted. It was during this time that a Dominican priest named Alan de la Roche helped re-establish the devotion of the rosary. Blessed Alan, also known as Alan the Rock, was a Dominican priest who lived in 15th century France. He was an eminent theologian and a famous preacher. One day when he was saying Mass, Jesus spoke to him in the sacred host. How can you crucify me again so soon? Alan was horrified to hear the voice. What did you say, Lord? He asked. You crucified me once before by your sins, and I would willingly be crucified again, rather than have my father offended by the sins you used to commit. You are crucifying me again now because you have all the learning and understanding that you need to preach my mother's rosary, and you are not doing so. If you only did this, you could teach many souls the right path and lead them away from sin, but you are not doing it. This terrible reproach made Blessed Alan solemnly resolve to preach the rosary unceasingly. 
Our Lady also said to him one day to inspire him to preach the rosary more and more. You were a great sinner in your youth, but I obtained the grace of your conversion from my son. Had such a thing been possible, I would have liked to have gone through all kinds of suffering to save you, because converted sinners are a glory to me. And I would have done this also to make you worthy of preaching the rosary far and wide. St. Dominic appeared to Blessed Alan as well and told him of the great results of his ministry. See what wonderful results I've had through preaching the rosary. You and all who love Our Lady ought to do the same so that by means of this holy practice of the rosary, you may draw all people to the real science of the virtues. After experiencing these visions, Blessed Alan made the renewal of the rosary devotion his mission in life. He now understood the power of the rosary as a means not only to renew the Dominican order, but to renew the world. This is how Blessed Alan de la Roche helped restore the Holy Rosary. In 1570, Christian Europe was weak and divided with frequent religious wars and persecution. The Turks were the biggest enemy of Europe during those times, and they were planning an attack. Look at them fighting among themselves. This is the right time to attack. Their army camped at the Greek city of Lepanto. They were ready to attack at any moment now. The saintly Pope Pius V was the only leader who realized the danger. There is nothing to worry about, said the rulers and the politicians. Without losing heart, he urged the regions and kingdoms to put aside their temporal squabbles and form a holy league so that the Turkish plan could never be realized. On October 7, 1571, Don Juan led a force of 250 ships, also called as the Holy League, and met the Turks outside the harbor of Lepanto. At home, Pope Pius V ordered the churches of Rome opened for prayer day and night, encouraging the faithful to petition the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary through the recitation of the rosary. At sea, the fighters also said the rosary every day. The whole fleet was dedicated to Mary Queen of the Holy Rosary. In the final tense moments before combat, the fighters prayed the rosary once again. The October 7th battle lasted some five hours with the ships fighting in close proximity. The Turks had the edge in numbers but the tactics and divine providence won the day for the Christians. Stories are told that Pope Pius was conducting business in the Vatican while the battle raged, and at one point dispensed with what he was doing and announced that the Holy League had won a great victory official announcement of the battle results did not arrive in Rome until many days later. People were jubilant, church bells rang, and joyful praise was given to the Blessed Mother for her intercession with our Lord Jesus. Soon, the Pope added a feast day, Our Lady of Victory, as an obligatory memorial to the church calendar, celebrated every October 7th the victory at Lepanto, and the intercession of the Blessed Mother garnered from the faithful praying the rosary would thus be perpetuated in Catholic memory. Pope Pius's successor, Gregory XIII, would change the name of this day to the Feast of the Holy Rosary. 
All throughout the history of the Catholic Church, many popes and saints have encouraged praying the rosary. As we begin to understand and appreciate the rosary and pray it more frequently, we come to see the true meaning of its meditations. We begin to appreciate how its prayers are reminders not only of Mary, the Mother of God, but of Christ Himself. Saints. Hello, viewers. Sorry for interrupting the video. I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.